For Krima Media's Quality, I'm Sane Daminim. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss his column titled South African Crisis, Despair, Hope, and Prophetic Part 2. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. When one asks what we should do to improve our political situation, the answer is usually a set of policies or a program for change. But Professor, you instead refer to hope and prophecy. Is there a serious answer? Well, it's not the same answer as I would have given 20 years ago. Uh, but what I do believe, and I've not read a lot on hope, hope is not optimism that everything will turn out good. Hope is that when you look at your history, for example, you see what has been done in the past, you draw on that inspiration and you ask yourself, they did that then, can we not do something similar? And during the struggle, the Radio Freedom would refer to a series of heroic figures Dingane, Sekukuni, Bambata, people who inspired generations by their heroism in uh, fighting against colonial conquest. So the history is one thing you draw on, but also hope is about uncertainty. You're not saying we will tomorrow be able to uh, free the country or some such thing, but you can see that some things provide an opening for us to achieve this or that, maybe in a small way, maybe in a big way, not waiting for it to land in your lap and see, seeing that things are not settled. Some small grouping of people can act on the situation. Maybe they become millions. So what I understand from reading about hope is that hope is something which depends on us. But just as the present situation, we wanted to depend on us, but we look at what's going on and we don't see an opening to do something. What I'm saying is there are openings. Sometimes those openings are just charitable openings, but charitable openings become bigger and bigger and they can lead to organizational forms of different types and involve hundreds, maybe thousands in political uh, activities. So I'm saying, I'm starting to understand hope as moving into the uncertainty and trying to turn it in a way that emancipates us. The emphasis you place uh, on hope uh, seems to rely mainly on uh, small scale activities. Uh, but surely the scale of the problems in our country requires large uh, scale of actions and organizations. But most big things start small uh, by talking to your neighbor uh, or uh, talking to a number of people who have the same problem or being moved by uh, Helen Joseph Hospital not having water. Gift of the givers go there. But apart from Gift of the Givers, who are big, they even in Gaza, uh, Gift of the Givers, what they do is done on a small scale by a number of people with soup kitchens, providing meals for people, uh, traveling to places where there's no water, no electricity, no food, and doing their best to help them. And that small thing is not permanently small. It may be, but it may become bigger. And we have to try something else. And I don't have a program. I've just been reading on hope, and I see hope as opening a way forward. And it's something that I get without being religious by reading a lot of religious people and being influenced by a lot of religious people. And they all, or a lot of them, also place weight on hope. Hope is not forecasting. Hope is not saying, yes, everything will turn out good. Hope is saying we can still do something, however dire this is. We can provide this, or we can help this person, or we can help ourselves to achieve this, that, and the other. And lastly, Professor, you are not a religious yet, but you refer to the need 
for prophetic action. Why is prophecy so important? I was very influenced by the late Father Albert Nolan and the way he explains prophetic uh, action is that he calls it, and other Christians call it, reading the signs of the times. You don't sit there and say, I foresee that this, that, and the other will happen. What you do is you look at the situation, where you are, the conditions that you are, and you ask yourself, as I quoted Banquo from Macbeth, asking the witches, which seeds will grow? What things have got the, are the embryos of change? And we can encourage them or discourage those that are destructive. So reading the signs of the times is analyzing what is happening today and trying through that analysis to point the way forward to what we want to achieve. So I'm very, I was more into prophecy before hope. I, I've been re reading and writing on prophecy for a while now. I'm not, an, I'm not a theologian, I'm not a specialist, but it is something that I believe is very similar to what I did with Marxism, which they spoke about analyzing the current conjuncture. Reading the signs of the times are similar, but it's got a religious inflection, and I agree with it. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna in conversation with Polity, discussing a South African crisis, despair, hope, and the prophetic part two.